we give honor to God on today for his goodness and his mercy. We honor the Lord this morning for his son, Jesus. And we thank God for his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen and amen. We welcome our visitor today with us. We thank God that the Lord led you this way. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus. Father, that we humbly bow this morning. Father, we bow with thanksgiving in our hearts, and we bow with thanksgiving on our lips. Father, we come to give you glory, honor, and praise. Father, we pray that your kingdom would come right now into this place. Father, we submit to you, we resist the devil, and he has to flee. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, hide Mary behind the cross, that they won't see me, but they'll see you in all of your glory. Have thine own way in Jesus' name we do pray. And the people of God said amen, amen, amen and amen. Today we're going to go to the book of Joshua. We're going to go to Joshua, the 24th chapter. Amen. And I'm going to read that whole chapter in its entirety, if that's okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. When you have it, say amen. amen. Joshua, the 24th chapter. And it reads, And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges, and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacar. And they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. And I gave him Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. And I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. I sent Moses also and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them. And afterward, I brought you out. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt. And you came unto the sea. And the Egyptians pursued after your fathers and chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side, Jordan. And they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand that ye might possess their land. And I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beer, to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam, therefore he blessed you still. So I delivered you out of his hand. And ye went over Jordan and came unto Jericho. 
And the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites and the per Perzites and the Kenites and the Hittites and the Gergesites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. And I delivered them unto your hand. And I set the hornets before you, which drave them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them, of the vineyards and olive yards which you planted not, do you eat. Now therefore, fear the Lord, and serve him in security and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which put your fathers, which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up out, up and our fathers from the house of bondage. And which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went. And among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelled in the land. Therefore will he also serve, will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he have done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witness against yourselves that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. Now, therefore, put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God will we serve and his voice will we obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statue and an ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up, up there unto an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us. For it have heard all the words of the Lord, which he spoke unto us. It shall therefore, it shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart, every man unto his inheritance. And it came to pass after these things that Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being an hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Tamasia, which is in Mount Ephraim, on the north side of the hill of Geshem. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that out overlived Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, buried they in Shechem, 
in a parcel of ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamar, the father of Shechem, for an hundred pieces of silver, and it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. And Eliezer, the son of Aaron, died, and they buried him in a hill that pertaineth to Panisha, his son, which was given him in Mount Ephraim. Amen, amen, and amen, amen. I'm going to go over to the gospel according to Luke. Amen. Luke, the 14th chapter. Amen. The 14th, 14th chapter, and I believe I'm going to start at the 26th verse. And this is Jesus speaking. He said, if any man come to me, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now let's go to the 33rd verse, and it reads, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsake not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. And I'm going to end my reading right there. And if I may use but for a subject, um, choose ye this day who you are going to serve. You cannot serve two masters. The scripture says you're going to love one and you're going to hate the other. And we find in the book of Joshua, chapter 4, we find the covenant being renewed. Amen. And the people were being reminded of what the Lord had done for them. We find Joshua gathering the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and he called for the elders of Israel. He called for the heads, and he called for the judges, and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And we find Joshua, he's reminding the people of what God had done what God had said, and how God had fulfilled what he said. And now he had given them a land for which they did not labor and cities which they didn't build. And they was living in them, and they was eating from the vineyards and olive yards which they did not plant. Amen? So today, we find ourselves in a land that we did not ask to come to, but we're here. And we're here because the Lord has allowed us to be here. We're not here because we chose to be here, but we're here because of one thing, we're here because we disobeyed the Lord. We did not keep the promise. We did not stay with the covenant that was made. And here we find Joshua reminding the people of the covenant, renewing the covenant. And he's letting them know that God fulfilled Everything he said he was going to do. 
in their sight. One thing about the God that we serve, if he says something, that settles it. There's no debate about it. He will do just what he said. We're here in this land because of our disobedience. Moses gave the law. Moses told them that if ye do not follow the Lord thy God and do all that he has said for us to do, he told them that they would be cursed with the curse and these things would come upon them. But he told them that if you obey God, then you would be blessed. How many are truly blessed today? We say we are blessed. We say we are blessed. But I want to ask you a question. How many of us has chosen, really chosen, to follow God? The true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How many of us have put everything that we have into him? How many of us have really given everything that we have to him? How many of us this day can stand up and testify, good God from Zion, <laughs> that I've chosen to follow the Lord wholeheartedly, that I've given up everything that he's asked me to give up, to follow him. How many of us can truly say that we are truly serving God today as he have asked? How many of us are truly trusting him today that he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. How many of us are truly reminded of the God that brought us out of Egypt? How many of us understand what happened when God brought us out? We are sitting in a land today that we did not choose to come to. But the Lord brought us here. And now that we are here, what is our assignment? What is our assignment? Our assignment is not to come here and just follow your reign. Our assignment is not to come here and gather as much as we can gather of this world. That is not our assignment. We have a kingdom assignment. And the only way we're going to get the assignment done is that we turn back to God. Wholehearted. Joshua told the people, he said, look, you've seen the hand of God. You've seen God move mightily among you. Now you need to make a choice. He's done just what he said he's going to do. Now you need to make a choice. How many know that we'll make a choice and we'll say, yay, God, I will, God, today. But as soon as trouble hits our house, what do we do? We forget about covenant. We forget about the promises of God. We forget how God brought us out and how he continuously brings us out. Every time we get to a situation, it seems as though we forget about the God that we serve. 
or do we really forget? Or are we really serving the God of um, uh, what God are we serving today? We say that we are serving the God of Abraham. But when we look at our lives, what is our lives saying about who we serve? Now you have to answer that for yourself. But the question is being posed today that you cannot serve two gods. Which one are you serving? Now, Joshua was the first one to come to the forefront and say, hey, look, as for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. What are you saying? What are your actions saying? Which God are you? You can't serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and do your own thing. Go where you want to go and do what you want to do. It doesn't work. Every time in the, in the book of Joshua, glory to God, God gave Joshua instructions to give to the people. And every time the people obeyed, glory to God, they were blessed. But when they disobeyed, then the anger of God came against them. And Joshua knew it. And he would ask the question. And then they, they got to come forth because they cannot move forward and conquer anymore until we find out who in this camp disobeyed God. Now the question is being posed today who are you serving? You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve God and money. You cannot serve God and serve the God of witchcraft. And I come against that today in the name of Jesus. Because let me tell you something about witchcraft. The power is limited. But the God that we serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God, hallelujah, that raised Jesus Christ from the dead with all power, that's the God that we serve. That's the God that I serve. The God that got up, he got his son up out of the grave with all power in his hand. And then, after many days, he ascended back to the Father. And he's seated today at the right hand of the Father. And he did not leave us comfortless. Because on the day of Pentecost, he sent the promise, which was the power, which is his spirit. Which we are supposed to possess Today, which we are supposed to be operating in today. But it seems as though the people are not operating in that God today. They're operating in the God of mammon. They're operating in the God of witchcraft. They're operating in all of these other gods that God told us not to operate in. And we wonder why we're in the situation. We wonder why we keep going backwards. We wonder why. I stopped by today to pose it to you. Now you can go ahead and serve them, but just know the end, what the end is going to bring. But I choose, as Joshua said, Pastor says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Because one thing about it, if God can't do it, if God can't deliver us, if God can't provide for us, then we in trouble.
but the God that I serve, I can testify that he can do all of that. So today, I pose the question, because your actions and the things that we do and the things that we say and how we operate tells people the God that we're serving. It tells them. So, the question is, who are you serving? Who are you serving? What are you doing today that calls people to believe that you are not serving the God of this book? Joshua was the predecessor of Moses. Joshua fought with Moses because God was grooming him to be the one to take the people, the Israelites, into the promised land. Moses could not go because of the prophecies of the book. Joshua was the one that was chosen to take the people in. God has chosen certain people to do certain things. God has chosen certain people to walk with certain people. God has chosen us out of anybody else he could have chosen to be here today to carry on his work. So Martin Luther King did his. Malcolm did his. They did theirs. Now is our time. Now is our time to finish the work. Now is our time to take up our crosses and follow Jesus. Follow Jesus' example. Pastor, we can't do what Jesus did. Oh, yes, you can. He said, and greater works than these that ye shall do. But we can't do the greater work because we're going after other gods. We want the money. 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 That's another God. But God has called us to go after him. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his. We got to seek God. We got to seek how he does it. Glory to God. And once we seek how he do it, then we are too. Do as he did. And once we're doing as he's called us to do, then he can add to our life. But we got the horse, the cart before the horse. We want to get all of this stuff. And then we ain't got no power. We ain't got no power. We don't have no power. If we got some, we operating in the wrong kind. That power that you operate in is limited. It can't get you everything you need. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, good God from Zion, the same power that brought Jesus up out of that grave, that's the same power that's supposed to reside in us. So you can't tell me that you can't overcome all these fleshly issues that you're dealing with. You can't tell me that. You can't tell me that. You can't tell me that you can't overcome anxiety. You can't tell me you can't overcome depression. You can't tell me that you can't overcome double-mindedness. Schizophrenia. You can't tell me that. The devil is a liar. Paul said we could do all things. Through Christ who strengthens us. We don't have to depend on the government. We don't have to depend on all of these policies and stuff they put in place to keep us bound. We don't have to depend on that. We have to depend on the Lord. 
and now it's getting ready to be evident uh, of who you serve in. Uh, Glory to God, I stopped by today to let you know that we're living in an hour where your faith, where your faith truly lies. It's getting ready to be tested. So we better get back to that Bible. We better get back to training up our children in the way they should go. We better get back to teaching them about who God is, the God of this book, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We got to tell them that the God that we serve got all power. They don't have to seek this limited power that's in operation in all of these other situations. They like the, the superheroes. They like the, all of them. They're talking about they come to conquer the earth. And all of that, they like all of that. And what's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? What's, we running after other gods. And we can't get in God's face and allow God, glory to God, to do what he needs to do through us so our children can see who the true God is. Pastor, Pastor, what I need to do, you need to make a choice. You need to make a real choice. Look, we're living in an hour where your money not going to be able to do what you need to be done. Because that's getting ready to change anyway. And what you're going to need is this God right here that will go before you. Aren't you tired of being used by this world system? I am. I am. They use you up, then they throw you away, have no need for you. But God says, I have need of you in this hour. But what I need for you to do is to get in my face. Stop saying it and do it. Because your actions is speaking louder than what's coming out your mouth. We are saying one thing, but we are doing something else. But God, with his good self, uh, he's calling us uh, to a higher place in him. Uh, and to the standard that he's already set. Uh, glory to God. Uh, and I stopped by today uh, to pose the question, will you hearken unto the voice uh, of the Lord? Or are you going to continue to run after these other gods? These gods that can't do nothing for you. These gods, glory to God, when you call on them, they don't answer you. But you keep calling on them. You're calling on rocks. You're calling on crystals. You're calling on all of this other stuff. They can't do nothing for you. But I'd stop by today to let you know that the Bible says at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Every knee above the earth, in the earth, and beneath the earth. If they don't bow now, when Jesus comes again, everybody's going to bow. So don't be afraid. He told Joshua. He told him, he said, look, Moses had already told Joshua, glory to God, back in Deuteronomy. He had told him not to be afraid. Be of good courage. Amen. But we scared of everything. God told Joshua, chapter 1, he said, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, 
Moses is minister saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Glory to God. And he told him, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. told him, don't be afraid. Why not, pastor? Because God got you. God got us. He got us. Glory to God. In all of our endeavors, wherever we find ourselves at, God is right there with us. He's got us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When are we uh, going to rise up and say what does say the Lord and stand flat-footed? In the power of an almighty God and speak to the enemy and tell him what does say the Lord and to tell him if you don't obey this is going to be your fate because when they come against you they're coming against God but he's calling us in this hour to leave everything to leave everything everything your family your children your finances your everything well how we gonna make it he gonna make it. he the way maker Everybody not going to be able to go. I already know that because we have excuses and we want our stuff and we like our things and we like our flesh and we like it this way and we like it that way. God ain't stuck none of that. He looking at your heart. He want to know if you love him. He said that if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. You're saying one thing, uh, and you're doing something else. Uh, glory to God. Uh, I tell you to go left, uh, and you go right. Uh, I tell you to stand up, uh, and you sit down. Uh, I tell you to speak, uh, and you shut up. Who's controlling you? He said, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger, they're not going to follow. Who are you following? Oh, I got a million likes on Facebook. What they liking? What are they following? Who are you following? And don't mention nothing about Jesus. Scared to say the name of Jesus. Won't even acknowledge him as I say and he the one that brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He didn't bring us out to get the goods of this world, Pastor. He didn't bring us out for that. He brought us out, glory to God, to go into all the world and make disciples. Glory to God. And what we doing? Oh, no, baby, I got to go home and get my chicken because I got to lay down early so I can get up in the morning and go see Mr. Bobo. God done called you so many times from Mr. Bobo. And he told you that he was going to supply all your needs. But you don't blame him because you've been in debt to Mr. Bobo so long. You don't believe that God will do what he said he'll do. But I stopped by today to let you know if you trust God hold Harley, he will provide. Ask me how I know. Well, pastor, well, pastor, well, pastor, I need, listen, listen to the voice of God. You have to do what he says. You have to go where he said go. And you have to say what he says. Well, you know, pastor, I got two or three degrees and my degrees tell me that um, I can do this, that, and the other. You can have 150,000. I don't care, but they ain't never healed nobody. They ain't never cast out nail demon. 
Come on, when Jesus said, and these works shall follow them. But we'd rather go after the gods of this world. Now, Pastor, you know, you know, I got to get my education now. You know, I, I need my education because my education going to get me where I need to go. I'm not against education, but you can't let education be your God. That that's your driving force that's going to get you. God will use education to get you to the place that he wants you to be in the kingdom. And you're supposed to get that to go there to take over. He didn't send you to join them. He sent you there to take over. But now, I got to be polite. I got to have the correct language. I got, I got to do all that stuff, you know, so they accept me. And so, you know, you know, and ever since I, I got there and they start accepting me, you know, I feel some kind of way. I feel like I'm a part of them. A part of who? A part of who and a part of what? I want to be a part uh, of the kingdom of God. Uh, I want to be a part uh, of this last day move. Uh, I want to be a part uh, of what God is doing this day. Uh, I want to be a part, uh, glory to God, of the kingdom of God. As it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth. They're looking at me funny today, Pastor. They're looking at me funny today, but I'm going to tell you what he says to me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He says, choose. Choose. You choose for your house. You make the choice. Can't nobody make the choice for you. Each one of us got to make our own decision about who we going to follow. I thank God for my mother. I thank God for her teaching us about the God that she served. Glory to God. But I got to get my own personal relationship. I can't make it in on her merit. I got to get to know her for myself. Because when I stand before God, I'm not going to stand in my mother's. I'm going to stand in my own. And I got to give an account for what I done with this anointing he put on my life. And so do you. So what? What is your life saying? What is my life saying? Am I following the who's who? Am I following my peers and and, and, and them ones, and they ain't going nowhere. They just out there hanging around, seeing what they can get out of me. Or well, am I going to follow? Who are you following? God has already proven himself. He's already done more than enough for us. He's already done it for us. When are we going to stand up for him? When are we going to stop making excuses? Why we can't do what we need to do? When you make the choice to choose, when you make the choice that you're going to serve God of this Bible, you've made the right choice. You can't just say it. You can't just say, I believe. The demons believe and tremble. We got to see some action. Behind what you believe. Because whatever your actions show me, that tells me who and what you believe in. Well, pastor, we didn't come for this. Well, whatever you came for, I'm giving you what God gave me. Because that's all I know how to do. That's all I know how to do is to give you what he gives me. And we got to get it right. You see the hand of the enemy. Don't you see it? Don't you see the hand of the enemy pushing us back, trying to take us all the way back? But the devil is a liar. I stopped by the day uh, to let you know, uh, just as God uh, raised up a deliverer uh, to deliver his people, uh, God uh, still got some deliverers uh, in the land uh, that's going to go in the regions. Uh, they going to take down. Uh, they going to pull down. Uh, those ha, devils ha, that are in those places. We didn't come to Kenley 
to take sides. We came to take over. That's why they had to leave. God sent a general in the region. And she stood up for truth. And they all what? That's what we came to do. That's what you're supposed to do. Wherever he sent you, you're supposed to stand up for truth. You're supposed to stand up for what's right. You are not supposed to. You see them taking advantage of God's people, and you won't say nothing. You go along with it for the few pieces of silver you can get. But the devil is a liar. You're going to have to give an account for not telling the truth to the people. You see them bamboozling God's people. You see them taking advantage of God's people. And you won't say one word. And you got the word of truth <laughs> and life <laughs> in your mouth. <laughs> you can speak a thing. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> and it'll tear up everything in that region. But you won't use what you got. Cause I want to be liked. I want to be in the know. But see, don't you know that if they like you, and they love you, then you are not part of this kingdom that we operate in. Because he said, just as they hated me, they supposed to hate you. But if they loving you, <laughs> you better check who you serve. He said, they going to put you out huh? just like they put me out. I don't want to hear that preach, Pastor. I want to hear that you going God gonna bless me. He already blessed you. He already blessed you. Now he's coming for uh, his return on his investment. He's coming for it now. He's been investing in you and investing in you. And he's been giving you and he's been telling you to do this, that, and the other. Now he's coming for his return on his investment. And what are we going to do? I'm done. 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 We on assignment. We on kingdom assignments. What's your assignment? What is it God has called you to? Somebody's supposed to be starting a school. Somebody's supposed to be starting a bank. Somebody. You ain't got to wait till you get old. He's calling the young people. But the young people, look at the gifts and talents, how the enemy is taking them and using them with these video games, taking their minds from them. When them, these young people are supposed to be being taught to be leaders. And now they're pushing you out of their universities. What's going to be your merit now? I'm mad. God has done so much to, for us. And we thought now we on our seats of ease. We can sit back and just reap the benefits of when people die. Number one, Jesus died for us to have a right to the tree of life. And he's raising us up. To be a voice to the nations. But the question is, will we speak what thus saith the Lord? Or will we speak what they want to hear? They got them itching ears. They want to hear something sweet and nice. They want to hear them cotton candy messages. 
something that'll make my flesh tremble. You need to hear something that's going to cause you to be able to stand. And have it done all you know, you will stand in this evil and wicked hour that we're living in. You got to be able to stand. You got to get out of your flesh. You got to get out of the soulless realm. You got to get over into the spirit. And you got to walk in the spirit because that's where the real war is, baby. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds go in areas and change, help get our people out and help change their mind so they can see really what's going on. They won't be Alice in Wonderland. They'll be citizens of a kingdom, of an invisible kingdom, operating on behalf of the king. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together for Master Jesus, the king of kings, the one that hung, bled, and died for the sins of all mankind. The one that hung, bled, and died. And the one uh, that's coming back uh, one day uh, for his church uh, without spot or wrinkle. Will we be the church that he's coming for? He's been ready to come. He's been ready to come. But the church is not ready. The choice is ours. We can't just say it no more. We can't just say it no more. Now he's calling us to action. And what you're doing will tell people who you serve. Not through your protest. We don't have to protest it. We can proclaim it. We have to go into regions like the disciples did. And preach Jesus and him crucified. That's what they did. And it cost them their life. We're not ready. We don't want to die for what we believe. Because we love this life too much. It's passing away. Every day, I don't care what you do to try to preserve it, it's going away from here. The life that we should be living now should be a life by the Spirit. Saying what Paul said, glory to God. I've done what he told me to do. I finished my course. And it's not about time for me to depart. Where are we? Where are we? Have you done what he asked you to do? Have we? You can't jump out there and do it without him telling you and giving you, the, telling you where to go and what to do. You can't jump out there in your own strength and do what you want to do. And some of us, he's already told us. Ain't got enough money. Ain't got this. Ain't got that. Just move out in whatever. Just, just let him see you moving out in it. Bible says the just shall live by what? Foolishness. 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 What is faith? What is faith? Whatever God has said to me, I'm acting on it because it's just as if it's true. And it is. Because he said it. That's the only reason I'm here in Kenley. Because we move by faith. We didn't have all the answers. 
We didn't have this. We didn't, we didn't even know nothing about Kinley. But when God said move, and he gave us the visions and different things, we moved. And people were there in place. And he connected us with them. And that's how he does it. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. And it happens that way because of our obedience. Because we obey what does say of the Lord. When we hear and when we move at what he says, then we begin to walk in it. But some people, because of what they said to us, we have stopped. And we are afraid now. But the Lord brought you into this place today to break that fear off your life. Because God ain't gave us no spirit of fear. What you afraid of? They can't do nothing to you, not unless the Lord allows it. So today, as an apostle, of Jesus.